Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 2 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the SMR Assault Rifle, which is one of two of the semi-automatic assault rifles in Black Ops 2. But before I start with the proper weapon review, I have to talk about two very important in-depth related things, things that are related to this show. Number one, in the previous episode, I said that I used grip on my light machine guns and submachine guns. What I was talking about was the quick draw grip. You can go back and check the comments and uh, Twitter and stuff because the quick draw handle or quick draw attachment is a pistol grip and that's what I was thinking about when I said grip in the last episode a lot of people are accusing me of weird conspiracies of like saying that attachments are bad so that I can keep them for myself I don't really know why and that leads me into the next topic of why in the world I would say that and why I wouldn't catch that error and that's because I'm having some health problems right now I don't know what's wrong with me uh, one of the things that I'm planning to do today is to schedule a doctor's appointment but I'm having very bad uh, I would say I can't spell very well, I can't remember things very well, I'm not able to pay attention like I used to be able to, and my visual acuity is extremely low. I've gotten to where it's uh, difficult to drive because I don't notice things. It's not that I can't see or that I'm going blind, my vision's excellent, but it's like I just don't notice that things are there, and I have the same kind of problems in Black Ops sometimes. I am not sure what's wrong, I know what it sounds like, but I'm going to go to the doctor to be sure and uh, the in-depths may have to slow down because I don't want to make videos that are erroneous and have lots of errors in them. This one I'm going to work very hard and double check and hopefully not screw anything up, but the memory is uh, failing me uh, rapidly enough to be concerning. And now that all that wonderful stuff is out of the way, let's actually talk about the SMR assault rifle. The SMR is the highest damage assault rifle in Black Ops 2. It can deal up to 50 damage per shot in close quarters combat and only drops off to 40 at a distance. That is a very, very minor damage drop and those are huge numbers right up there with the light machine guns or greater. This means it is a two to three shot kill at any range. You will never need more than three shots to kill unless somebody is behind cover or you're shooting through a wall, you know, something like that. Oftentimes you're going to get the two shot kill. The headshot multiplier on this weapon is 1.2x, meaning you get 20% bonus damage when you shoot somebody in the head and due to the way they set up the damage profile the headshot multiplier isn't useful except at long ranges it's only 1.2 X so you can't one shot somebody to the head like you could with the M14 in previous Call of Duty games but at that medium to long range it will save you a shot if you ding somebody in the head and I think that can be incredibly useful because two shots kills way faster than three the two shot kill range is extremely impressive at 38 meters that's better than some of the light machine guns in this game you will always kill somebody in two shots anywhere in the body all the way up to 38 meters which is colossal if you put a suppressor on this weapon you get an approximately 30 percent range penalty so even with a suppressor you still have a 27 meter uh, two shot kill range that's a greater range than most of the assault rifles in general have and you're doing your maximum damage with this one so this is the ultimate range weapon to counteract this extremely high damage, it's only fair that it should shoot slower than the other assault rifles. The rate of fire is 450 rounds per minute. This is the slowest firing assault rifle in the game, and it's semi-automatic, so it only shoots once per trigger pull. And with most semi-automatic weapons, it's very easy to oversample it. Uh, a brief description of oversampling is, let's say I have a good trigger finger, and I can squeeze it at six or 700 times per minute. What happens is the game resets the gun so that it's allowed to shoot at 450, RPM. So if I squeeze once and then I squeeze again too fast, nothing happens. And while I'm releasing and getting ready for the second, third squeeze, time is wasted. So I pulled my trigger finger three times and shot twice, and I'll be shooting less than 450 RPM. It'll probably be closer to 380, 375, something like that. So uh, my recommendation is that you don't spam this too hard because the rate of fire is very, very low, and you can actually make it shoot slower if you squeeze your trigger finger too fast. The recoil on this weapon is low to moderate. I initially wanted to put it at low, kind of like the FAL, but it definitely kicks more than the FAL. It's not quite a moderate recoil weapon like some of the other assault rifles. It's uh, entirely manageable considering the rate of fire, but if it were fully automatic or you could shoot faster, it would have more recoil. Speaking of which, now's a good time to talk about the rapid fire attachment. When you put the rapid fire attachment on this weapon, it shoots at 400 RPM. You get a rate of fire penalty when you put the rapid, not my, I said rapid fire. Fire. There's the memory thing again. When you put the select fire attachment on there, you get a uh, 50 RPM uh, penalty so that it only shoots at 400 RPM. It's a little bit slower than its previous max.
maximum potential or I think eight ninths of its previous speed. It is fully automatic in this mode so you can just hold down the trigger and it will shoot and spray but it's not like a, a bullet hose it's just gonna go pop 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 very uh, consistently and it is still the slowest firing assault rifle even in fully automatic mode. However when you do put it in fully automatic mode your recoil changes a bit. It's still low to moderate for individual shots. I, I found myself sometimes in the semi-auto mode just squeezing the trigger one at a time to get better recoil but if you hold it down the weapon seems to have a fairly low center speed so it is harder to control it's definitely harder to control than the FAL and I would be a little bit careful in the semi-automatic uh, select fire mode because I tend to burn through my ammo very very fast in this mode and it is a slow reloading weapon the SMR has a very average time to kill. Time to kill is medium. It's pretty much the bearer of standards in time to kill on the assault rifle class. You'd think with a high damage it would be faster, but it's really not because it shoots so incredibly slow. You're not going to be able to get a lot of like super fast kills with this, but it will be more kind of like the TAC-45 that as long as you don't miss, they'll be pretty fast. It'll be very consistent across all ranges would be the best way to say it. I find the iron sights to be among the worst in the game, and I believe this is another balancing factor to kind of force people to use optical attachments. I find that both the foresight and the hindsight are very cluttered, and that it's difficult for me to uh, see targets while looking down the iron sights. I can do it. They're not the worst iron sights I've ever seen in a Call of Duty game, but they're a little bit too ugly, a little bit too cluttered for me. This is entirely subjective. This is the only subjective part in an in-depth episode, hopefully, you know. But uh, I highly recommend and prefer optics on this weapon. Uh, the EOTech sight is what really floats my boat. The target finder is nice, but I found that it, it it hits a little bit inconsistently. This is subjective. Again, I just I don't have a good feel for the target finder. It's a newbie kind of thing and people accuse you of things. ACOG didn't work particularly well for me. Red Dot sight had too low a level of zoom, but the EOTech sight worked excellently. As I mentioned before, it is the slowest reloading assault rifle in the game. The reload time, or the time in which it takes to go through that whole animation of putting the magazine in, is 2.69 seconds, and the reload cancel time is 1.82 seconds. So you can save some time if you reload cancel, but even the reload cancel time is the slowest reload cancel time amongst all the assault rifles. This weapon reloads very, very slowly, and it has a fairly small magazine, so you better get used to that reloading. The knife speed is 1.23 seconds, and it runs at 95% of normal speed. Speed. These are very normal for the assault rifle class, nothing funny or fishy about that. Same thing with the raise and drop and the ADS in and out. Quarter second to aim in, quarter second to, uh, to let go and un-aim down sight. Raise and drop, very normal for the uh, assault rifle class. It has the worst hip fire amongst the assault rifles. And I'm not saying this because it's semi-automatic or it shoots slow. I've done that somewhat subjectively in previous in-depth episodes by saying that the AN-94 has troublesome hip fire or something like that. Or the burst guns aren't good for hip fire. But this one actually numerically has a larger hip fire box and a wider spread therefore meaning less accurate than the other assault rifles so I can empirically numerically 100% say that this has the worst hip fire of any assault rifle in the game on top of that it's semi-automatic which makes the hip firing even more difficult and I would very highly recommend against it you may have seen me hip fire in some of the gameplay here a lot of the times it didn't go particularly well now back to the magazine thing because I skipped ahead of myself a little bit the magazine size is 20 and a standard magazine and that is the lowest amongst the assault rifle class. Very low. Thankfully, it's a high damage weapon. You can still kill a lot of people with that 20 round magazine, but you will be reloading a lot, especially if you're going with select fire. The extended mags attachment will bring you up to 27 rounds and the magazine closer to normal, but still nothing particularly impressive. Not that much unlike the M8A1 that I reviewed before it, I feel that this weapon is best used at long ranges, camping, watching an objective, holding a choke point. It's not an in-your-face kind of weapon. It does have some close range potential, some kind of skill because you can two-shot people, and if you've got the skill to aim very, very quickly and squeeze twice and not miss any shots, you'll kill somebody in an average period of time, and it can compete in that arena, but it's by far best used at long ranges because the range on this gun is incredible, the two-shot range is incredible, the three-shot kill ranges anywhere on the map. You can just drill and punish people with this weapon and I feel that that's absolutely what it's best at. It's best for picking off light machine gunners that spray, uh, snipers that aren't particularly accurate, watching a bomb, watching a flag, escorting somebody, all of those sort of things. This weapon is excellent. Close range, it's not particularly excellent, but some of the more skilled players probably can make it do. 
My recommended class for this weapon is as follows. When it comes to perks, you should run the Ghost perk, you should run Toughness and Dexterity. Ghost is going to keep you off the radar because I'm going to recommend Silencer in a second. The Toughness perk is going to make it to where when you're being shot, you flinch less and you're able to shoot people more downrange. This is going to save your life when engaging light machine gun users, uh, snipers, and sometimes the SMG guys that rush you. Dexterity helps give you some sort of close range advantage. I think I'm just a Dexterity addict because I recommend it on almost all of the classes because I don't like that delay after uh, not stopping sprinting. I can compete with this weapon a little bit with Dexterity. If you don't like Dexterity, Tactical Mask would probably also work quite well. The attachments that I recommend are the EOTech Sight. I found that that reduces the visual recoil a little bit, but not the actual recoil. I run Silencer on the weapon because even with the Silencer, the range is still utterly incredible and uh, I can just get one extra headshot at the longer ranges to still kill people in two shots and it helps keep me off the radar which I don't want to be a camper and on the radar ghost helps with that a little bit too because I do play somewhat mobile I don't sit 100% in one particular spot and the quick draw handle also helps me get into uh, a fighting stance quicker if I do run into somebody in close range that's my recommended class and I'm recommended this mostly because of the silencer and ghost and the range but also because subjectively this is the class that I did the best with while using this weapon and it's the one that when I go back to playing that I will use and that I will be the most comfortable with and I'm assuming that many of you will also be comfortable with this class. It's not particularly bad with the target finder and, and loud and spraying but I just found it to be best as a silenced weapon. Well guys that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out my previous episode which uh, it was a gun review on the M8A1 came out about a week ago before I got lost in attachments you can click the box on the left and that'll open in a new window. If you'd like to check out my next episode which which is so super top secret awesome MLG that I can't tell you about it because I don't want anybody to copy me before tomorrow. You can click the box on the right when it goes live. And as always, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.